Isn't it ionic? Don't you think? A number five ionic. And I really do think. Come watch my review. Cause I made it for you. Well, that's enough of that. Sounds almost Canadian. But here's a, here's a great little electric car where the electrons flow and down the road you go. Stick with us. We'll crawl all over this thing and go for a ride. Marty, I have seen the future. I really have seen the future. You know what I think? Let me share with you what I believe. I think where the future is electric propulsion uh, because it makes so much sense and, it, and it's, from an environmental standpoint, it's great, but it's also just from a performance st standpoint. You can't beat an electric motor. Uh, it generates its torque immediately and you just, you know, transmission-wise, all you got to do is spin the motor faster, and there's your transmission. <laughs> but the question I have is, where are we going to get the electric power from exactly? These days, our number one and almost only choice, although there are some fuel cell vehicles out there, very definitely, that you can buy. In certain states in particular, where you can get hydrogen uh, to power the fuel cell. Uh, we have battery-powered cars for the moment, and this is a great one. This is a this is this little Ionic Five Limited all-wheel drive from Hyundai. is uh, is got a lot going for it. Uh, I know they just came out with the six, hence all the Kevin Bacon references you will see in this. He's video. an actor. He's never actually saved anyone. But actors are repugnant. I know. Oh no. Acting is a wonderful profession. I mean, you don't get to live just one life. You get to live so oh, many lives. And we got Quill the worst gift ever. A disgusting actor. <laughs> Kevin Bacon is supposed to be a really good guy. Uh, and his wife. And, and his daughter. And his, his whole damn family, as far as I'm concerned. His brother. You know, they have a band. Anyway. Uh, this is uh, basically Hyundai's first all electric from the ground up situation. What they've done with their electric cars is really interesting to me. They, uh, is, you're familiar with the Kona and we have reviewed the Kona electric and I really like that car. The thing about the Kona is that it's basically the gas powered version except ain't got no motor. Well, excuse me, ain't got no ice. It has no internal combustion engine and is a full electric. And where you look under the hood and where you would normally see an engine, you would see this big electric motor complex, which powers it. Well, in this case, we're starting from the ground up as an electric, which has so many advantages, including the fact that the way the uh, battery, which weighs, by the way, about a thousand pounds, the lithium ion polymer battery, is mounted to the lower part of the chassis in such a way, kind of like a Tesla. It, it, completely helps handling. It's the best possible place you can put all that weight for secure handling. So it does that. And uh, by the way, while I'm on the subject, uh, we have two electric motors. This is an all-wheel drive version and the big motor is in the front and this, which is, uh, God, where is that? I'm looking at my notes here. Yeah, 165 kilowatt motor in front and a 74 kilowatt motor in back and your total horsepower output is 320 horsepower not bad <laughs> not bad at all especially since this thing just loves to scoot around and the battery itself is uh 77.4 kilowatts so that's a big battery and i know the big questions you have because it's the most important question in a lot of ways what's the range and uh how long does it take to charge well the range everything being optimal is uh, 266 miles 
Now this is winter time and uh, I probably won't get anything close to that. But they have some features on this that are very important, one of which is an onboard heater. Last two nights it's been in the teens here and the car just sat. And I, I, I parked it when it had 100% on the battery. Just finished charging it and I lost a whopping 2% of the battery capacity. <laughs> Not bad. And I'm t when I say cold, I mean 14, 18 degrees. So that's pretty chilly. Uh, and how long does it take to charge? Well, let's see here. Now, according to Hyundai, the standard charger, that's what everyone's trying to refer to nowadays, which is like your home charger, 240 volts. And that will take you uh, seven hours and 10 minutes. But if you find yourself one of those super rapid chargers, which this car is capable of swallowing the all them electrons at a higher rate, you can theoretically go from about 10% charge to 80% charge in roughly a half hour. So that's uh, that's good. That's much better than what we started with. And if you try to charge it on your home current, uh, you'll you'll have to park it for a couple of days because that big battery takes an awful lot of electricity. But what? Now we'll look a little bit closer in depth because uh, I'm real fond of this car already and I've only driven it about 14 miles. <laughs> but we'll put a lot more miles on it for you. Hang on. So beneath this beautiful, I'm pretty sure that's aluminum. The hood feels very light. Uh, here is our power plant. Now unlike the uh, Kona, which I mentioned earlier, this uh, is ground up electric. So the Kona, when you... <laughs> I love this about that car. You open the hood and it looks like there's a motor. It's got a little cover on it that you'd swear there's a little four cylinder engine under there, but there isn't. It's electric. And this one is all electric from the get go. So they start with the packaging right away to suit their electric situation. And look at here, we got there. You open up and oh my God, who's done this? Who, what kind of, oh, that was me. Uh, that's uh, that's your, your home charging area. <laughs> which I have exact. I use it. The problem is I have to drive to get to a rapid charger. I have to drive quite a bit. That's just the way my state is at the moment. They're kind of uh, not not with the program, but they're getting there. The whole country is starting to get there. But uh, I I could only get about uh, by the time I'm home I have about 80 percent battery charge, and to top it off to 100, I'd plugged it into the uh, household current it took over overnight but it completely charged it to 100 percent which is great over here we have our our coolants and our uh, we, we have different kind of coolants for different kind of things because you got to remember the cooling and heating system for this battery is critical plus you have to cool the motors themselves oh plus you have your windshield washer fluid which is somewhere underneath there oh that would be this right here there's your and where's your air intake well there ain't none but i tell you what we do have Right there, your 12 volt battery. Now, an important thing about 12 volt batteries, and this is true like, for example, hybrids like the Prius, is the 12 volt battery actually powers the initial computer booting. What, what are you doing here, Mr. Gimbal? Mr. Gimbal is upset with me. What, he, where? there we go. So, uh, anyway, what was I talking about? I don't even believe, oh yes, 12 volt battery. So, on the Prius, for example, you have a 12-volt battery, and the reason that battery is so critical is it fires up all the computers that then fires up the computers that run the big battery for the hybrid system, or in this case, the full electric system. So it does a lot of little minor things as well, but most importantly, there's a lot of computers that are running everything, and they have to be booted up for anything to work on this car. It's 100% computer dependent like most people are now. You see them with their cell phones and their, well. So that's what you do with that. It, uh, you gotta remember that you're gonna have to at some point replace your 12 volt battery, which is just like you replace it on any other car, gasoline powered car. After a few years, you need to put a fresh one in there. And as you can see, that one's very easy to, uh, to get to. Now then, do you, you may have the question, well, can I jump people with that battery? Uh, no, I would never jump with an electric car or a hybrid, uh, unless it's, it's like a life and death emergency. Then there's probably instructions where you might be able to, I know on the, on the uh, Toyota hybrids, you can, 
Uh, but it, you got to follow the instructions very carefully. And uh, there you go. Now, let's look at our wheels and tires, shall we? Because uh, the way we get power back to our battery when we're driving is regenerative braking. And uh, the brakes themselves look fairly normal, conventional, nice big ones too. When you think about the weight this car carries for its size, uh, that's important. But uh, the main way the regenerative brake braking works is it just the motors become uh, generators when you're coasting or putting on the brakes. And uh, as you will see in depth, you have adjustments you can make on this car to, to the degree of regenerative braking it uses. Uh, I like leaving it on automatic because that seems to work very nicely and it seems to be a smooth type of application of the brakes that uh, you'll get used to pretty much immediately. So anyway, these beautiful wheels on our Limited, which I believe these are Limited specific for the Ionic 5, but they're, they're 20 inches. Big wheels, great big wheels on this thing. That's the thing these days. Is that good or bad for electrics, big wheels? Oh, I don't know. But here we have our hatch. Whee! What do we have here? We have a fair amount of cargo room. It it's, actually has quite a fastback uh, type of roof line on here that limits your uh, cargo area a bit. It's real hard to say, but it's, it's good overall. And naturally, you, you got your 60-40 <laughs> increments there that you can fold your seats to increase your uh, cargo capacity when you need to do that. Underneath here, do we have a spare tire? Oh no, tire mobility kit. Well, you know how I feel about that. But you know, you're such a great little electric car. We'll allow it. Uh, I sort of approve. <laughs> so anyway, very nicely finished. And uh, there you go. You got the popularity and the versatility of your hatchback situation. Right there. Everything's electric. So there you go. The more you know about this car, the more you like it. My big thing is we're going to just see how well the charging works in a rapid charge situation, if I can get to one. But more than anything else, let's just drive it and enjoy it and see what it is. And of course, we'll have our sounds of nature. Uh, it's cold outside, but here we have warm fireplace. Yeah, it's a wintry sort of day out there, but here in our Ionic 5, we are comfortable and warm, thanks to the miracle of electricity and the sounds of nature, which, you know, is a Hyundai. I can't thank you enough for putting that in cars because I really love that. <laughs> I have no idea why, but I think it's just the greatest thing ever. But here is our uh, our driver's display for our Ionic. We'll just call it five. It wasn't there a five in a in a recent semi uh, scientific type of series where the children are run well anyway. Uh, as you can see, it's a very different kind of display that I have dialed up at the moment. And uh, I think it's great because it actually gives you a lot of good, useful information, including I just charged it completely at a public station, which I, I think I did a short clip on that. Uh, <laughs> that was an experience. Uh, but 86% is what we're left with after going 39.6 miles. And the outside temperature is about 42 degrees. So. That was uh, almost all highway miles, and uh, so you can, the range that they're now giving me is 180 miles left on this uh, charge, which is perfectly good for most situations, or if you're a semi-urban situation. The problem I have here is that there are very, very few public chargers where I live in the, I'd say within the, the 40 mile radius, actually greater than that. They're out there, but they're few and far between, and you only have so many slots at the public charger. So for an individual who has a charger at home, a charging unit, because if you try to charge this on just 120 volt, it'll take uh, eons. Uh, it's, it took uh, my charging 
uh, adventure that I went through was uh, 53 minutes and I started with uh, the battery at 57 percent and 53 minutes later at 150 kilowatts uh, I had 100 percent battery charge so do that uh, with what you will information wise the the, the company charged uh, 43 cents or something like that a kilowatt so uh, it, it was it's not it, it came to sixteen dollars and seventy seven cents and I compared that with a uh, rav4 hybrid uh, half a tank right fifty percent I would run about twenty three dollars at current gas prices so twenty three dollars versus sixteen dollars but the range on the rav4 is easily over twice what this car is so all these things if you're doing if you're doing the electric thing to save money, and this thing costs quite a bit more. Matter of fact, wh where's that? Where's that Monroe? It's right here. Hang on. We're at uh, fifty-eight thousand dollars, which is considerably more than the Rav4 hybrid. So the economics don't always work out, but that depends on where you live and how much you pay for your electricity. So anyway, I'm not even supposed to be talking about this now, but I'm talking about it. Uh, but on what else do we have here that's great? Well, you got your range over here. And uh, down here, this is part of your regenerative braking. Now, if you'll look here, right here, that is your regenerative braking, which is so much fun to play with. Because here, I have an level one. I can change it to level two or three, or I thought I could. Wait a minute. I did when I was driving. Maybe you have to be driving. Yeah, I guess you have to be driving. Uh, I, have it, I had it set on eco, but your settings are sport, eco, normal and if you hold it all the way down you go to snow and I can vouch for this uh, vehicle doing quite well in the snow actually uh, it has what Hyundai likes to call their H-Track system and you have a separate electric motor for your back wheels and a separate one for your front wheels it works quite well uh, I didn't have any trouble we had about uh, what do we have we had about five or six inches of snow and it did fine it got out of the driveway that's always a major test <laughs> <laughs> because we got this berm up where the road is up there, you see, and the, where the plows leave this berm. And you got to plow through that. You, just gotta, you can get out with your shovel and shovel it like a normal person, or you can just bash through it like an idiot, which that's, that's my way. So what else do we have that's informative here? Uh, that's the important stuff. You have your range. You have your amount of charge. You have the level that you have your... Uh, uh, regenerative braking set on which is also key to what mode you're in as far as the driving mode and since we're on snow right now I'm gonna put you back on eco where I like to leave it for maximum maximum efficiency and uh, I'm really surprised I can't adjust this while sitting here but while you're driving the car you just flip it up to, to from one to three and three being the uh, largest amount of regenerative braking. It's just like putting on the brakes. And uh, if you hold one of these two paddles, you got that one that says plus, and you got this one over here that says, uh, what does it say? Plus, minus, plus, minus. Oh, they say the same thing. <laughs> As if that's not confusing. But uh, one of these two paddles, if you hold it all the way down, it goes into uh, what we like to call golf cart mode, which is uh, single pedal driving basically only for use in very low speeds and you touch the accelerator you go forward you let off the accelerator the brakes come on so you have that which you learn to regulate as you drive the car and it, that's fun and that's a good way of extending your range because the more regenerative braking you can do uh, the more juice it puts back in the battery and the longer your battery will last so that's all good so one of the first things I need to show you is now you sit down in the car, right, right? You hit the EV start button, you start up the car, and then this is how you shift this thing. There's this little knob here. This is convenient for your thumbage, you see. Your foot on the brake, and you go up to drive. Or you go to neutral, or you go to reverse. And to put it in park, little button right here, dink, and we're back on park. Neat, huh? That works fine. Uh, our, our central display here is a touch screen, of course. Uh, in the Lawrence of Arabia uh, widescreen format, also known as landscape, 
and uh, it seems to be a, a nice the the quite it's real interesting you'll take a good look at this here with me it's got an almost antiseptic look to it uh, very very high quality screens and they uh, it, it's it's a very different if you compare this to like the uh, Hyundai's Kona EV car uh, the Kona is kind of dedicated to the idea of taking a regular car and sticking an electric motor in it instead of an engine and everything else is pretty much the same very very similar to what you're used to in a gas car right down to looking at the engine under the hood it looks like there's an engine underneath there well, this uh, the on out the Ionic series, and there is a now a six, as Kevin Bacon's been talking about. Good old Kevin. We love Kevin. Uh, it, it, those are like from the ground up EVs. And so they've gone kind of uh, modern esque, let us say. And the architecture in the interior is very different because of that. Uh, for example, looking down here, you got this little cubby here, which I don't know what that's for. You can barely read it, but you got your uh, barely read it, barely barely reach it. You have your USB here, and then you have a power port, and then you have this kind of a uh, void of area, which is kind of nice. I mean, I don't know what you're going to put down there, but it's got like a tunnel, and then we, we roll back here, and we got. Uh, a dual I believe these both you can charge on either side but right now it's charging my phone and if I let's see if I can put it over here because this is kind of unique mm, no it won't fit over there <laughs> this mine won't but uh, it looks like you might have the capability of charging two phones how good is that I mean that's brilliant but anyway you got all this space down here with a sprinkle from a donut I don't know where that come from and then you have uh, this port here which doesn't go all the way through it's just <laughs> it's just very interesting because it's very different than what you might be uh, used to but there's a lot of space in this uh, fairly compact hatchback car that really it, it never feels even remotely claustrophobic and uh, I, I keep coming back to this uh, screen setup because they look like they're almost exactly the same size. I don't think they are. And I believe we have a, a variety of, uh, how do we go? Well, we'll go to home here. And uh, climate, valet, all these different th things you have. Quiet mode is, I don't know what that's about. I'm scared to think because this thing is so good. At, I already snuck up on some, some friends with it by accident. When quiet mode is selected, radio media is played only in the front seats. Volume will be automatically lowered if the volume is set on higher levels. Oh, so it's so the children in the back can sleep. <laughs> That's very nice. I like that. Uh, well, what else do we have here? Well, there's not a whole lot in terms of setup unless you go to setup. And then we go to vehicle. Hello, vehicle. There we go. Drive mode. Now the heads-up display. I guess I should turn that on so you can see it, huh? I turned it off. Why would I do that? Because I hate them. Augmented reality. I think that has to do with navigation. I have not actually tested that. Uh, and there's a. Oh boy, I can barely. Can you see that? I'll, I'll do this here. Hopefully you can see that. But that's your heads-up display, and the augmented reality I believe uses the map up there to help you navigate with. A standard mode is what I was just looking at anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then disable mode is the most effective mode of all. My favorite. I just don't like those heads up displays ever. Oh, here we go. This is something else I was looking for. Cluster. Uh, here, let's go with our themes. You must see the themes. Uh, link to drive mode. We'll turn that off for the moment. And we'll go to theme A. That's theme A which looks very much like what you were looking at. Uh, theme B. 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 There we go. Now that's a little, uh, that's a little wilder. I think that may be your uh, sport mode also. That's kind of cool. That's kind of interesting. And then we have theme C. Well, this thing just does not like my finger, does it? It does not. Uh, and that's kind of a <laughs> greenish. They're all, the basic format is the same, though. You don't, you're never going to get your uh, artificial analog instrument cluster, I don't believe, on this car. 
but you can you can adjust the content, uh, all kinds of things. It does have the blind spot view monitor, which is great. Whenever, like you put the left turn signal on, and there it is, boom! It's showing the left side of the car. Same thing on the right, and that is actually quite useful. It helps. You. It's just another way, in addition to your traditional blind spot warning of checking your blind spot so they don't want you running into anybody on the side of you which is good oh look here you can even adjust your welcome sound let's do that let's turn that on here we're going to go through this just for fun welcome sound all right we're going to turn the engine off engine god listen to me i'm such an a complete dinosaur when it comes to cars all right so we're all done and uh, let's open the door like we're leaving. We're leaving. Yeah, I know. It's in, that's nice to tell you that you left your phone there. Because I would do that in a heartbeat. All right. Now we sit here. Now let's fire her up. Listen for the, uh, for the greeting sound. Uh, is that it? Is that it? I guess it's it. So uh, we've been greeted. We've been uh, welcomed. And... Uh, as you can see, we have all kinds of other adjustments you can make to this main screen. Uh, you can use the automatic, which will dim it accordingly to try to keep it at an ambient light level matched display. And it's on white or black or automatic. What's the black look like? I'm curious. There we go. You know, I kind of like that. I, I'm doing that more and more I, on the last Tundra I had. The uh, capstone, I, I did that. I went that route because I find it much more, for whatever reason, it's my eyes are, are like, uh, they're little orbs of uh, unpleasantness these days. I got to wear glasses all the time pretty much to see, and I never had to. Uh, but I find for whatever I like a high contrast situation on everything. Dive watches, instruments in airplane, anything. I like... I like this kind of format because I can see things better. So I'm going to leave it there and see uh, the person that's going to pick this vehicle up from the fleet company tomorrow. Uh, hopefully they will change it if they don't like it because I don't want to. I don't want to discommode them. So all right, back to uh, back back to uh, hmm. Is there anything else that's really super important here? Not really. This is our EV setting here though that will. Uh, we have a DC charger and an AC charger, which is, uh, it kind of uses, when you're using a fast charger like I was using, it's using, I think, both. Hell, I don't know. It's amazing. But, you know, that's what we live with. And let's go to, uh, huh, let's go back to media. There we go. All right. So I've given you a real uh, hobnob of, of uh, uh, really not very good information as far as the coherence of it all, which that's my trademark. That's part of my YouTube trademark. Uh, completely incoherent. And uh, here, let's open this up, shall we? Look, it splits right in the middle. Ooh, aha! Big piece of glass, that panorama. I mean, big, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, something I got to mention. I mean, this is like critical, critically important. See this seat here? This is your passenger seat. You got your leather. Uh, it's heated and I believe, can you do the, uh... oh God, how do I find that? I found it earlier. Wait a second, let's go here. Oh, here we go. Yeah, you can ventilate. There we go. Your driver's seat you can uh, heat and cool. There's ventilation. And there's heating. And now I just put it on three. You see? You see? And then you hit off. And there you go. Uh, but anyway, they're heated and cool. But that's not the big thing about these seats, these beautiful leather seats. These things are so comfortable, in my opinion. Some of the most comfortable seats I've had on a Tesla car in quite some time. They're just, I mean, it's worth it having just, <laughs> just having the car so you can go sit in it because they're very, very comfortable. They offer a real good degree of lateral support, but they have a certain kind of like a, almost like a memory phone cushiness that is quite, quite 
Bob and Rooney is quite uh, rewarding and wonderful. Now, we're going to go aft. Let's go aft. Look at all the... Hey, look at here, man. There's been a dog loose in the wood. All right, here we go. Wow, the door almost opens 90 degrees. Look at that. That's good. Top marks for that. All right. As you can see, leather here, a textile underneath here. And look at what we have here. Yes, indeed. Window shades. Beautiful, beautiful. And my a window switch is not working because it must be turned off. Let's have a look. Yep. Somebody turned it off. Wouldn't me. Uh, not 100%. I'd say about uh, 90%. And the back seat. It's got the same kind of memory foam thing. It's nice and comfortable and a wonderfully, totally, and completely flat load floor, which you would expect. Because underneath this is the batteries, and it's that's flat too. And there is no drive shaft to go through there because it, the rear wheels have their own electric motor. So why not be flat? And it is flat. And here we have uh, both of these. It's interesting how... It looks like they go for the standard USB. I haven't seen a USB-C. There must be one in here somewhere. But that's unusual. But what is also unusual and cool for a compact, semi-compact car like this is it has a ton of room back here. The leg room is outstanding. And you got this ventilation right here in the pillar. It's kind of great, man. I mean, I would assume with the air conditioner on. By the way, I should mention this. The heating on this car works quite well for an electric. Because electric, that was kind of an Achilles heel with some electrics. Is uh, because they don't have the standard big cooling system that gets heated up by the motor or engine. Sorry. And uh, you use heat. It's bled off of that by going through a little radiator in your car, basically. And that's where the heat for your heater comes from. But with, uh, while this car does have a cooling system for the uh, batteries and for the electric motor, it's not the same thing as far as its ability to heat the cabin. So they use heat pumps, they use all kinds of different magic to get uh, heat out of the car. And rather than uh, go into great depth about what exactly they use, I will just say this, it works very nicely in very cold weather. I had no problem with that at all. And it doesn't seem to like totally drain your battery down. Uh, parking it outside at night when it was really cold in the, in the low teens, uh, I only lost two or three percent of the battery over two days of it sitting. So not a problem, not a big problem. Uh, now here we have our armrest, which I give, it has, now see, it's long enough and it's high enough to be pretty near, pert near perfect. This is real good here. I do like this armrest, it's excellent. And since the batteries are completely underneath the car, oh wait, one more thing, one more thing. Yep, you got your state of the art LCD type, or LED type, or just L type of bulbs in your lamps in your map lights which is great um, one thing I was just thinking about is this is supposed to be a hands-free thing uh, obviously I suck at this I don't blame the car I think it's me I don't know have we been back here before oh look it's a package from Grove they are a very environmentally friendly company, you know. Uh, the hatchback, I was noticing before, you'd have a tire motility kit. And uh, I'm still upset about that because in so many ways, this is such a practical car. But if you had a flat and you didn't have a spare, like so many people, I'm just going to rant about that forever probably. It's not appropriate, but I do it anyway. So there we go. An excellent interior. You can stop the beeping. I know I know. I have the key right here. Uh, well, check this out, by the way. This is how this... Push it in. Push the button. It's telling me the keys are in the car. You see? Uh, smart. It's actually what it's telling me. is the engine's running. Which is impossible because it doesn't have an engine. But I had it activated in the, in the drive mode. And our fire's still going, which is good. I'm very happy about that. There it is. 
and uh, what else do I have to tell you about the interior it's great it's like the whole car this is a very nice driving vehicle and uh, while I'd like a bit more range and I wish it could charge faster there are certain limitations by physics and by current battery development and this has some of the most sophisticated batteries that you can put in a car the lithium ion polymer batteries so uh, if you have a situation where you have access to a charger easily this is a it's a nice choice a very nice choice i'm going to just sit back now and enjoy the fire give me a marshmallow i got one back there Well, of course, I'm listening to the lively forest as I go through the winter forest, which is not very lively at the moment because it's winter. But let's, uh, let's see what we can uh, experience in this very wide, this car has a very wide stance and kind of a uh, wheel at every corner, mini type of uh, architecture similar to that similar to the wheel at every corner that the minis have but it's a much bigger car than that and uh, it seems very stable right now I have a lot of sand and crap on the road from winter but it seems to uh, seems to be handling very nicely yeah, it's very stable this is not excessively bumpy but you can throw it around quite a bit, and it seems happy enough. This is a real right angle turn. I discovered this first time on a motorcycle that suddenly there's like a 90 degree turn that you didn't know about. And we now we shall zoom past the school bus and past the vineyard. Well, nothing's more depressing than a wine vineyard during the middle of winter. <laughs> it just looks like a bunch of dead stuff, basically. And that's kind of sad. Kind of sad for us. All right, now we'll turn around. As the little scurrying creatures of nature look along and through the woods and see in wonder the Ionic Five. Very sure footed this car. It's got that big thousand pound battery pack right on the bottom of the car. And it's just, uh, it's well engineered to begin with. Fun to drive? Absolutely. And I would like to point out that I am in eco mode. Not exactly driving in an economic, uh, economical manner, but... Uh, and it's very quiet at speed. You just have some wind noise, but that's it. No engine noise, of course. We do not need our engine noise. There is no engine to make noise, which I find very satisfying. We also have all-wheel drive, which uh, I think is a pretty, it's H, H, what do they call it? H-Track, I believe. The Hyundai all-wheel drive system on this car that is um, very, very sophisticated in how it looks at traction, looks at your traction and does things to make sure that uh, Everything is optimized for handling and also just for efficient use of energy. Boy, we got a lot of crap on the road, don't we? And this efficient use of energy is, uh, believe it or not, who knew uh, that uh, having an all-wheel drive system can be very beneficial into how the power gets distributed at any particular given roadway or surface to help extend your uh, battery life, which is what we're all about. I mean, come on. 
Clear. Clear. Whee. Compliance is also very good. There's a, it, the suspension is firm, but it takes uh, it takes the bigger bumps very very nicely. It's kind of like this incredibly comfortable seat that I'm currently poised in. It's very very. It's got a lot of cushiness to it initially, but you still have good support. It's a great seat. It's an excellent excellent seat. I don't recall encountering it in any other. Hyundai products right off the bat, but I wouldn't be surprised if uh, there are a few that use this because it's great. There, I'm, I've gone to level two on my uh, re regenerative braking in order to, first of all, I want to I wanna get some of that power back, or at least limit its loss during my spirited driving. And that's the thing, you know, you still suffer from this, and I'm sure this probably gets a lot better with time of ownership. The uh, charging anxiety, you keep thinking, well, I gotta charge it, I gotta charge it. And the situation I live in now is uh, they do a really bad job as far as having the, uh, let's just say, public charging facilities abundant. There's even a Hyundai dealership near me uh, but they don't sell any of the, uh, the uh, Ionic 5 or the Ionic 6, even though, and there's all these plug-in hybrids and everything, but they don't have like a, uh, as near as I can tell, a public charging area. Or at least for Hyundai owners, you know, if somebody comes to the dealership for any other reason other than not putting in, in the in for service, but doing something else, buying parts or something like that. You would think it'd be nice to be able to plug in your car for a little while. Have a cup of coffee, a cup of joe, while you charge, but no, nothing like that. Let's see, its current temperature is, it is, whee. Oh God, I've lost my current temperatures because I'm driving another car at the same time I'm driving this and everybody puts place and stuff in different areas. Um, um, <laughs> it's 76 degrees. Oh no, no, that's the battery I have left. Um, nature cares not for the temperature, apparently. I'm gonna stop at the stop sign. I'm going to determine the outside temperature. I'm gonna say 37. And it is, and it is, and it is 38. Oh, that was close. You know, I, I, I much prefer conventional analog instrumentation, but on this car, the way they've got it set up seems to work kind of nice. I, I sort of approve of it. And here we have, we're showing, we're doing a lot of our driving in rear wheel drive here. And when we're coasting, we're not doing any driving, of course. Uh, it's telling me I still have 149 miles left after driving. Uh, oh, wow, I'm on the wrong screen for that. Jeez, 46 miles. So that's looking real close to 200 mile range, which, uh, is about what I think it's supposed to have. It's not great. It's not. It's not a great amount of range for an electric. The new I Ionic Six, I believe, has much better range. But it's a very different kind of car, as near as I can tell. Uh, hopefully, I will have one when they become available to the press fleet in about two months, two or three months. I think they're going to be available. But. You know, it, it, like I said, the electric lifestyle depends on your particular situation, what kind of driving you do. If you're in a situation where you're like, you have a 20 minute commute and you get to work and they have a charger at work for you that you can use, that's a real good setup. And you're never gonna have to worry about, uh, you have a charger at home and you have a charger at work and you're not gonna have to charge all the time. Like every time you stop, 
at work or at home charge it. You don't necessarily have to do that unless you do have quite a, quite a ways to go uh, in your commute. But once you get all that set up, that uh, network, if you will, you're in good shape. I mean, you can uh, you can absolutely deal with it all. And as I mentioned before, even though I'm in eco mode, this thing has got plenty of oomph. It zooms right along. And it has a lot more, most cars of this size that are hatchbacks like this, the engines that are usually in them don't have this kind of acceleration and power by any stretch. They're good, they're adequate, but they're not fun. Of course, the idea with this though, once you it, it's, it's hard not to zoom along in it because it's fun, it's enjoyable. It's a very entertaining little car. And when you have sounds of nature, lively forest playing, you have a, a sense of contentment, a sense of peace. It's almost like a form of meditation without meditating, of course, because you need to be paying attention to where you're going. That's kind of important, you need to do that. But, what a pleasant drive. Mm. I like it. You may ask yourself, where is my rear suspension on this fine Ionic 5? And there it is. It's a little multi-link setup right there, as you can see. Aluminium. Aluminum for all, except for this front particular locating arm there. That That's not aluminum, but uh, there's your little coil spring. And look at the flatness of it all. You can tell this is electric because that big flat area you see right up there is where your battery would be located. It's underneath there. And you have this nice, smooth, aerodynamic lower surface and a fairly interesting uh, rear suspension. The car rides nicely. It's fairly firm, but it does, uh, it does have a, a high enough degree of compliance that it's, it's pleasant to ride. So, uh, and everything is covered. Everything is all designed to smooth the process, to make you as aerodynamic so you will slide through the air with the greatest of ease. You also have a decent amount of ground clearance, about, like I said, I think I mentioned before, about six inches, which is good because it can get in and out of your rural driveways without any problem at all. And uh, we got a big snowstorm coming, so we may actually test it in some deep snow, but I don't know if we'll do that or not. We'll see. I still have charging anxiety. Will, will I use up all my battery? Well, it's already shown itself to do quite well in the snow setting anyway, so... And uh, by the time you see this particular part of this particular video, you would already know whether or not I drove it in deep snow or not. So, But anyway, that's one of the great things about the electric lifestyle is its complete simplicity. And the rear drivetrain is its own electric motor and is completely removed from the front drivetrain, completely separate. No mechanical link whatsoever. And uh, there you go. Very satisfying. A lot of good workmanship. It's a very nice little electric car. Enjoy. Well, gee, everything has a price, right? So we do have a price on our uh, Ionic 5. And I apologize for the condition of the Monroney. It's very hard to read, but that's what I got. So uh, bottom line here is your manufacturer's suggested retail price is uh, 55500 with options and that kind of thing we came to. $58,005 and uh, it is very well equipped. If you can pause this and read it, you can see every little bit of stuff that's on it, including things like uh, your heads up display and all that good stuff. And while we're on the, the subject of things, here's just a copy of the receipt uh, I got when I was, uh, when I charged the car. It had about 60 something percent on it and uh, it took uh, 53 minutes and $16.77 of electricity in Northeast Connecticut to fill her back up to 100%. So, uh, 
that's that's not totally cheap, but it's much cheaper than a full tank of gas for the time being. But who knows what uh, what's going to happen with the price of electricity? So. Wonderful car, the Ionic 5. I really enjoyed driving it. Uh, I think it's worth a look for you if you want something electric. Take care. Remain calm. All is well.